Hello there, I'm Soph, these are my notes, and this is the bra that could go to space. Yes, it is my bra. Uh, I hope none of you get some weird satisfaction out of saying this. Mm. <laughs> Ew. On researching bras in space, I found out loads of interesting facts about life in space, which I'll sprinkle throughout this video, but the main thing I discovered was that no specialist bras have been made for travel outside of Earth, except perhaps the most famous reassembled bra of them all, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin's original spacesuits. You see, it was a group from Playtex, a company known for their bra sewing skills, who won the bid to make the original spacesuits. Competing against military contractors, who all made stiff armour-like suits, the Playtex team used their experience of sewing bras to produce incredibly stitched 21 layered spacesuits, flexible yet durable and with an iconic look. So the majority of the spacesuit ended up being a kind of Frankenstein-like reassembly of the materials that were used to make bras. The latex used literally came from the same store of latex that the company would use to make bras. There'd be like two pipes, one going to the bra factory and one going to the spacesuit making factory. And Playtex, with its spacesuit making division renamed ILC Dover, still make NASA suits to this very day. There's actually quite a lot more to this story and I go into it in a bit more detail in my extended Nebula version of this video where the details are in the description. But basically, it's such a fantastic one that there was talk of making a Hollywood film or all about it called Spacesuit, based on a book all about the same story of the same name. Although unfortunately that film hasn't been released yet, or, and as far as I can tell it hasn't even been made. Filmmakers, stop sleeping on this, it's such a good tale. But whilst bra technology has gone extraterrestrial on astronauts' bodies, it's rarely focused on the well-being of boobs. And that's part of the problem, isn't it? Everyone's always talking and thinking about astronauts, never breastronauts. Up on the International Space Station, which is orbiting around Earth, astronauts have more choice in what they use for daily tasks than you might think. They can choose their own toothpastes and moisturisers and makeup, uh, as long as the chemical compositions of those things are approved first by NASA scientists. Clothes-wise, they're often in pretty normal garments, like t-shirts and trousers. They have to take part in, on average, about two and a half hours of exercise a day to stop their muscles from deteriorating. And whilst they do that, they often just wear normal Earth trainers, seems do the job fine. It seems fitting then that astronauts also get a choice of what bra they wear. This means that when they're exercising, at least, sports bras are pretty common. They may not have to worry about the effect of gravity on their boobs, but there's still a difference between the way their rib cages and their breasts move as they run, so holding their breasts in place may feel more comfortable same as exercising on Earth. So, when in 2007, Sunita Williams became the first person to complete a marathon in space, running on the ISS treadmill at the same time the Boston Marathon was happening on Earth, she was probably just wearing a regular Earth sports bra, just like this one, although probably far higher quality because I don't take my sportswear seriously. As for when astronauts aren't exercising, well, I couldn't find much on it to be honest, but it seems like it's just like wearing a bra in normal life, down to personal choice. And then the third kind of potential bra situation is when they're out on spacewalks outside of the space station, and that's when they're wearing their full protective, potentially Playtex designed spacesuits. And a nappy, it turns out. Now, it seems like those spacesuits are able to kind of hold everything in place and do that enough that maybe a bra is needed less than when they're chilling in the space station. So maybe they don't wear a bra then. Again, I don't know if they can fit a bra under the space suit. Still so much to find out. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with using a regular bra per se. I'm just saying that there's space for improvement. When she was a design student at the University of Oregon, Olivia Eccles based one of her projects around designing a bra that's more appropriate for low gravity use, specifically during exercise. Now, I hadn't realised quite how inappropriate a regular sports bra was for space until she pointed out a lot of the reasons. For example, in space, fluids in your body move around a lot. This is one reason you can end up looking a lot younger, because more fluid moves to your face and kind of pushes out the creases so your face looks smoother. But this dynamic body liquid sloshing <laughs> means that you need a bra that will be able to morph to match your fluid profile. She also comments in one of her infographics that an astronaut's torso can change by about three inches in microgravity, which is wild and another thing to consider in terms of 
stretchiness. Also, sports bras are hard enough to pull over your head in a terrestrial situation, so it's even more of a faff when you're in space. So Olivia reckoned having kind of like a front side clip situation would be a better option. And a third thing is that when you're in space and you sweat, your sweat basically forms little globules on your skin that you can just shake off and then they get absorbed by the ship's ventilation system. But regular sports bras trap a lot of heat and sweat in them, so perhaps a more ventilated option would be better in orbit. Taking all of her notes into account, Olivia created this really cool looking prototype called the Nebrio Space Bra. And then after further feedback, she came up with a take two design, which was even snazzier. However cool this was, let's be real, it was a university project. So unfortunately, no matter how much easier the Nebrio Space Bra would make exercising 400 kilometers above the earth, even if it made that a pleasant experience, it doesn't seem like it's gonna happen anytime soon. But NASA, if you're watching this, I'm sure you're not, why don't you get some tips from Olivia and let Playtex have a chance to go back to their roots a little bit. That's it for now though, I thought I'd try making a slightly speedier video than normal, so here it is. Uh, but I wanna know from you, what if you could take one unusual outfit to the International Space Station, what would you wear? I think I'd take an all-in-one and some makeup and make myself look like Ziggy Stardust, just for one day like this video if you like it, share it if you share it, subscribe if you subscribe it, and media my socials if you want to do that. Otherwise, all that's left to say is thank you so much for watching, have a lovely day, and remember to keep telling everyone you know that the original spacesuits were basically just like a Frankenstein bra. Because I think that's a great little factoid. And an astronomical thank you to my wonderful patrons with new Science Word shout outs to Shuttercup, Angela de Golier, and Daniel Stanek. Sorry, Daniel, I think I forgot to do you last time. And a hello to Drove, Brent, Adam, Terry, and Justin. There's nothing incriminating in the background, is there? A pencil? <gasps> oh, scandalous. <laughs> <laughs> and here is a cheeky little click, and here's a link to my Patreon. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with using a regular bra, 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 bra. I'm gonna be high as a cat by then. <laughs> Still so much to discover, you know. I don't know why I stopped the video. And that's the end. Here's a video where I decided which planet was best for a birthday party. Here's a playlist of my favourite videos of my own. Humble I know. And here is a Patreon link. Bye!